hello everybody now uh, i'll discuss about the uh, solidification of the welding process actually we have already discussed the different uh, welding processes but the structure joint quality or the properties of the weld joint to some extent depends on understanding of the solidification behavior of the welding process so from that perspective i'll try to explain just to try to give an overview of the uh, solidification behavior associated with the the fusion welding process so here you see the typical structure different types of the grain structure first we understand the different types of the grain structure usually happens associated with the welding process or maybe it associated with the casting process but it is like that that first we see there is some equiex uh, crystals so equiex crystal is is basically equally the almost equally in all directions commonly found adjacent to the cold mold wall so uh, over a mold wall we can see there is a equiex kind of structure is usually formed so it is starting this thing so it entirely depends on the what way the heat is extracted and this uh, temperature gradient exists uh, one uh, at the in, in particular position so since there is a some interface so at the interface usually we can we can found uh, in in a, in a casting process there is a kind of the equiex structure now once equiex structure then we can see there is a particularly one directional growth we can find out so directional growth it follows the steepest temperature gradient it usually then we can say this is the columnar kind of the structure usually form the next step so here from the figure also we can say the columnar grains usually form in this particular case now once columnar grains forms then when we reach exactly at the at the middle position almost the same time this heat is extracted so almost same time it solidify so in that case we can get the when the so many nucleation occurs at the different positions then uh, from there we can find out the equiex kind of the uh, structure usually formed in this case so you see columnar grains usually long and very thin and heat is created on the steep temperature gradient so in this case the solidification is relatively slow and grow perpendicular to the surface usually occurs that is the typical characteristic of the solidification behavior for a one particular sample now usually during the solidification the pure metal is associated with the solid liquid interface moves in the uh, the planar interface usually occurs but for an alloy the mode of it's hardly you can find out the planar interface in that cases that solidification of the in the solid liquid interface usually occurs in the can be a planar interface can be a cellular interface or can be a dendritic interface it depending upon the uh, the solidification conditions and as well as the what kind of the material we are, we are using or we are performing the welding process or casting process so overall what we can say that you can understand from here that there is a possibilities of the during the solidification it can either create kind of the equiex structure of course it follows certain specific solidification conditions or it can create some kind of the columnar structure and one that means it's a one directed uh, one particular direction it follow and also at the same at the center you can find out this is equiex structure but grain size is relatively bigger of course it depends on the this the uh, rate of the solidification and as well as the temperature gradient and what way we are extracting the heat is losing from this content so based on that different type of the structure is usually formed so all depends on the that what way the solidification front moves whether it is moving as a, as a planar interface whether is it moving in the cellular interface it is creating or it is creating some kind of the dendritic interface it forms depending on these things we can overall understand the solidification behavior associated with the the welding process and uh, or casting process but of course here the focus is the welding process now here you can see the basic solidification mode we can say the basic solidification mode it can be planar so interface can moves and it creates the uh, planar interface or oh, it can be cellular also you can the cellular structure kind of it can forms the during the solidification front or you can create the columnar dendritic structure we see the the dendritic arm is there one particular direction and this primary or secondary dendritic arm is there so it is basically the columnar structure but within that columnar structure we can say it's a columnar kind of the dendritic structure so i mean to say that this dendritic so we can say this as a one column so it is can be one column like that so it's a columnar structure form but inside it is uh, it is creates the uh, different shape of the dendrites which is consisting of the secondary dendritic arm or ternary dendritic arm now of course dendritic structure is created but in in this case we can say equiex dendritic kind of the structure is so it's a almost similar size of the structure if you see so this are the the grain size is uh, more or less the similar size it is creating but 
it's in general it is called the equiex dendritic structure so overall grain structure is more or less same and in inside we can get the uh, dendritic structure so overall this dendritic planar cellular uh, interface equiex or columnar uh, dendritic structure all actually depends on the this uh, the solidification parameters which is we uh, we can say that it's basically uh, mainly depends on the uh, temperature uh, gradient so once we get it but when you're talking about the uh, solidification for the oiling process you see uh, if you perform the oiling process the two different high speed uh, oiling for then oiling is performed uh, at very high speed so in this cases we can expect the elongated oil pool so this is the molten pool shape of the molten pool when the oiling torch is moving at very high speed or uh, even if the oiling torch is moving very slowly in that cases we can get this kind of the elliptical a profile elliptical oil pool profile so of course this kind of the profile is in uh, influence the uh, type of the solidification behavior associated with the oiling process we can see that see uh, so always is try to trailing pool of the boundary of the tear drop shape we can see this is the, uh, the in this case the tear drop shape is that high speed and which is the, in, in this case is the oil pool is nearly straight so that means in this case the if you see this is the teardrop that means it's a very high speed so it's a kind of teardrop will be creating and this columnar growth or dendritic growth usually a columnar growth usually occurs in the which is try to follow the perpendicular to this central line usually but it it typical in case of the very high speed L little slow then it will try to converge to make a, a perpendicular with this line now if this if it is a columnar gains a straight normal to the pool boundary this is the this is usually follow you see normal to the pool boundary so if the columnar grain which is following the normal to the pool boundary in this way it is try to create this case so now if it is elliptical shape then it's create the profile is something like this so it is converging uh, at this side so here uh, this way we can see so not exactly very straight it's a very cur curvature from just there so this is for the regular in the uh, low speed but once the the very slow speed in the some kind of this kind of the structure also form so it takes this uh, this columnar structure is there but at the center uh, it can create kind of the equiex kind of the structure so overall you can see that these are the typical profile of the uh, this this the columnar structure or equiex structure associated with the uh, oil pool solidification but we can distinguish these two based on the it is a very high speed or it is a very uh, slow speed and of course that that also decide the the shape of the oil pool so that shape of the oil pool is basically linked with the type of the the this uh, columnar uh, grain usually from so columnar growth usually from um, associated with the oiling process so in this case telling uh, when the elliptical shape it is it produce the oil pool is basically in this case the um, this uh, curve so here columnar grains are curved in order to grow perpendicular to the pool boundary so always because perpendicular to the pool boundary is the steepest temperature gradient exists so it will always try to follow this direction so uh, direction of the columnar grains in that particular direction so that's why this is the basic features associated with the solidification of the uh, oiling process now we can further uh, look into the solid oiling solidification so of course grain structure affect the susceptibility to the solidification cracking and mechanical properties also and in this case uh, of course we try to look into what type of the grain structure usually forms associated to the oiling process one is the epitaxial growth usually occurs at the fusion boundary and usually autogenous fusion oiling process that means we are not mixing any kind of the uh, another material during the oiling process so that is called the autogenous fusion oiling process so here molten metal is contact with the base metal uh, definitely so if you see the oiling direction some this is the oil pool molten metal and this is the the oil pool boundary so here the oil pool boundary so some interface which is the this is the fusion liquid part and other part is the solid part so here grown growth initiates at the solid liquid interface so this is the, we can say the solid liquid interface the growth starts from this particular uh, point interface and proceeds towards the oil central line so here if you see the it is actually process to the, the solidification occurs the growth actually the growth means basically the solid liquid interface moves so in that way you can explain this is the growth so growth occurs towards the the center of the uh, uh, of the this thing so suppose this is the center so growth occurs towards the center now this is called the epitaxial nucleation and uh, usually uh, epitaxial nu nucleation and, and growth so here see 
the perpendicular uh, towards the uh, this it, it is always try to uh, follow uh, this uh, uh, towards the uh, grain uh, soliloquy interface the growth is try to follow the interface but one specific crystallographic direction so now if you try to look into the specific material so it will try to follow one specific crystallographic direction for example for fcc and bcc this direction is the trunks of the columnar dendritic usually grow is 100 direction so this uh, this direction is basically the oriented with the 100 direction and that direction is basically depends on the type of materials we are analyzing solidification growth uh, columnar growth associated with the uh, usually the pure metal. So, here for example, in the FCC BCC crystal structure this growth direction is usually 100. So, it is marked the solidification direction and, and growth usually occurs one specific crystallography di direction. So, this is called the epitaxial growth at the fusion boundary. Now, if you look into this other aspect, if we increase the welding speed, then uh, see the elliptical shape to narrow PR shape through. So, here from here to here you can see that there is a the welding speed is actually increases. So, when in the in this case um, the crystal grow occurs the following the steepest temperature gradient you see steepest temperature gradient it is follow this direction this is the columnar growth occurs after solidification and this usually occurs and if you see this is the the normal to the pool boundary because at this point the steepest temperature gradient exists. So, it follow this kind of the columnar structure. Now, it is changed at a very high speed it takes. So, therefore, it takes this try to fall perpendicular to this to take this particular shape. So, it takes this perpendicular shape and finally, it takes this kind of the thing. So, here if you see low velocity and the high velocity the columnar arrangement of the uh, columnar growth direction are different in these two cases. So, we can that easily distinguish uh, in terms of the velocity uh, that means whether it is low speed or high speed and second part is that the which direction the steepest temperature gradient exists. Oh, of course, it depends on the oil pool boundary which always the perpendicular to the oil pool boundary or I can say the solid interpret the steepest temperature gradient easily exists. So, here we can get the two different kind of the profile. Now, we can little understanding just to a simple mathematical calculation and for example, the welding speed is V, velocity V the at the uh, arc uh, torch is moving with the velocity V. Now, crystal growth has to be accommodated or has to be stable in such a way that it will try to accommodate the uh, welding speed. I mean to say that the growth rate can be adjusted depending upon the whether the oil is very low speed or very high speed it will try to accommodate this thing the, and it will uh, after accommodating this the growth rate it will it will follow particular shape whether it is very PR shape or whether elliptical shape that depending upon the velocity. Now, suppose welding speed is V and crystal growth rate equal to R. So, therefore, this condition must be satisfied r equal to v cos theta. So, here you see that uh, this is the growth rate at any point this uh, growth rate which is perpendicular to the uh, this thing. Now, you see and uh, this growth rate can be calculated v into cos theta. So, v to cos theta means here you can see this is the, the growth rate and this angle is at any and at any point. So, at any suppose here it is taking that this theta equal to 90 degree, but here at the center point it is making theta equal to 0 degree. So, theta can vary from 0 to 90 degree. So, accordingly the growth rate will vary or the growth rate will vary and just to uh, compatible with the the welding speed we are following in this particular case. So, I mean to say that if uh, uh, r equal to v cos theta, if cos theta equal to 0 then r equal to v. If uh, um, theta equal to 90 degree then r equal to 0. So, that means here the growth rate equal to 0, but here the growth rate will be the maximum and but that we can calculate the growth rate, but the direction of the columnar growth will always occur which is normal to the, the surface. So, here the columnar growth will occur the normal to the surface. So, here normal to the surface. So, here this is the, the direction of the columnar growth, but the velocity that means uh, crystal growth rate uh, that is the that depend, depends on the what is the value of theta or I can say that with, the, with direction theta or I can uh, not exactly theta not only theta because theta is the geometric parameter it can vary, but I say that it depends upon the velocity v. So, this way you can calculate. Now, solidification rate is the greatest when theta equal to 0 and uh, at the well central line and solidification rate will be the lowest at the when theta is the maximum. Now, initial 
low rate of the crystal growth is usually associated with the relatively planar solidification front but what kind of the solidification for initial phase usually associated with the planar solidification uh, front so at the low rate of the crystal initial low rates of the uh, crystal growth usually we can find out the solidification for planar but when the growth rate increases then in that cases it can change from cellular and in further increases it can change from cellular to the cellular dendritic different uh, structure so it, it follow so so actually the completion of the oil solidification is corresponds to the highest growth uh, growth rate so um, in, in in this case for example this uh, if we see that this it is always the columnar grain it follow uh, perpendicular to this thing and of course in this case the speed is very high so in this case the columnar growth is occur but at the center point usually we can say the equx dendritic structure is usually fo form and other cases the columnar dendritic structure usually form but at the center point equx dendritic uh, structure form so this is the typical the solidified structure associated with the very high welding speed in case of the arc welding process now at high welding speed it is associated with transition from uh, columnar growth to the equx growth also if you see that high welding speed because you can see that uh, growth rate here it is the growth rate equal to 0 r equal to 0 here and but here the growth rate is the maximum r equal to v so here at the center point we see the growth rate is very very high but at the other point the growth rate is low so in between so that's why at the which part the growth rate is maximum here we can actually to try to follow the equx growth and that usually occurs at the final stage of the solidification so when the solidification starts so gradually at the interface the solidification uh, the when is intact uh, some interface because that interface helps to extract the heat uh, from the the molten pool so when it extracting the heat then heat is conducted a at the interface so at the interface the solidification will start first but at the center point the solidification occurs at the end stage so when at the end stage uh, there is a suddenly uh, that means very less time the total heat will be the extracted when the very within the very small time total heat will, will be the extracted then it will try to create that at the the so many position the the nucleation will formation start at the same time so that will try to create create some kind of the equx structure uh, at the at the final stage of the solidification that's why it is actually associated to the at the center point because the center point is subjected to the maximum growth rate now but this is the other other side of this thing when the uh, in this case there might be that high amounts of the segregation may be associated to the at the uh, at the final stage of the oil solidification it means that usually at the center point the segregation is one kind of the defect there is a segregation in basically simply variation of the uh, composition so variation com of the composition might happens during the solidification and is usually associated uh, at the exactly center point where growth rate is is very high so that is the another problem the solid segregation might happen now Coupled with the very shallow thermal gradient, so low thermal gradient at this stage leads to the high degree of constitutional supercooling also. So here the low thermal gradient, temperature gradient talking about the in this case is the diving force for the random dendritic growth is basically large. So in this case is but in this case is low thermal gradient and high amount of the uh, constitutional supercooling is promoted to form the the different positions the uh, random growth means the nucleation start and the growth of the nucleation usually occurs at the very large so in this uh, noted the general dendritic and the cellular structure in the weld to be finer scale in the in the casting process if we compare with the casting process so definitely uh, the structure in the oil tend to be a very finer uh, process due to the comparatively high solidification rate of the oil solidification i mean to say that the solidification rate is usually higher in case of the oiling process as compared to the casting process so when the solidification rate is higher we can expect the finer structure in case of the oiling as compared to the casting process but higher oiling speed or very thick base material that will try to produce the very high rate of the solidification and of course when the high rate of the solidification means finer structure associated with this uh, process so one side the high that uh, as compared to the casting process the welding is associated with the high rate of the uh, growth rate or high rate of the uh, solidification so when high rate of the solidification we can expect the finer grain dietics, uh, finer grain structure we can expect as compared to the casting process but in other way when growth rate is also very high 
then there is a possibilities of the formation of the segregation defect associated with the uh, welding process. Now, you can do further on the understanding of the welding solidification. One is the well metal nucleation mechanism we can see that what are the nucleation forms because solidification before in the solidification process starts with the nucleation and then growth. So, in well, well uh, composition what a nucleation occurs. So, mechanism of the nucleation is basically uh, directly linked with the control of the microstructure in the oil pool, but we try to understand what are the nucleation occurs here. So, growth of the columnar grains. So, in this uh, we see that the, the columnar grains is try to grow one particular direction which is normal to the oil pool boundary, but it can be columnar grain can be interrupted with the formation of the new grain. So, when this growth of this columnar grain can be interrupted by formation of the new grain that is one, but one case is the when new grain forms the growth will try to follow the uh, epitaxial grain, uh, the growth of the epitaxial grain will be also interrupted with the formation of the uh, new grain. So, we see that epitaxial growth means one prefer crystal the orientation this growth usually occurs and of course, it, it depends on the type of the crystal structure whether BCC, FCC it usually 100 direction is the epitaxial growth occurs, but it is disturbed can be disturbed this growth with the presence of the formation of the new grains. So, in this case the dendrites which is observed in the mushy zone usually occurs and behind the trailing portion of this thing behind the trailing part in the mushy zone we can find the dendritic structure. So, therefore, in this case this mechanism of this uh, dendritic fragment so growth of the uh, this thing nucleation uh, growth of the columnar grains is affected by the formation of the new grain. So, in that cases and of course, when there is a mushy zone the, uh, the dendritic uh, growth uh, dendritic structure we can expect. So, that dendritic can be fragmented by formation of the new grains or uh, other external aid the new grains usually form by the fragmented dendritic part. So, in this case the fragmented dendritic part or of course, the some convection current also there and this this so there is a flow of the liquid metal. So, flow of the liquid metal within the uh, oil pool also that also helps the transport of the fragmented dendritation and of course, at the same time when growth occurs we try to grow occurs with detachment of the growth. So, detachment of the grain also occurs because of the convection current presence in the oil pool it or helps to follow some kind of the heterogeneous nucleation process in, in the oiling process uh, within the oil, oil pool because it is hardly this all the, the liquid metal is basically the flowing uh, the, this thing it is not a still liquid metal. So, therefore, we can expect all the nucleation usually occurs the heterogeneous nucleation process. Now, we can of course, control the nucleation process using the different uh, mechanism, but mechanism of the uh, formation of the nucleation of the new grain is like that one is the dendritic fragmentation is the source of the for the heterogeneous nucleation process. Then grain detachment also the sites for the formation of the heterogeneous nucleation process and heterogeneous nuclear itself with the presence of the convective current. So, heterogeneous nuclear itself is the mechanism for the formation of the nucleation. So, here uh, ok. So, there is another point, point here apart from this the we apply the cooling gas also. So, cooling gas also induce some kind of the uh, uh, induce pressure on the liquid uh, liquid pool. So, that helps to transport the liquid metal. Uh, and that can be a driving force for the transportation of liquid from one position to another position. So, it basically all kind of the external things the cooling uh, is uh, try to promote or try to create the heterogeneous nucleation process associated with the fusion welding pool. Now, we try to look into the uh, mechanism one is the dendritic fragmentation is the one mechanism for the formation of the heterogeneous nucleation process. So, dendritic fragment oil pool convection is the principal cause of the fragmentation of the dendrite that we can see that from the dendritic tip this in within the mass zone small part of the dendrites can be fragmented out. Now, this dendritic fragments are carried out by the oil pool and act as a nucleation site for the start of the nucleation process. So, nucleation for the and that nucleation from the nucleation it from the new grain. And of course, all this thing the this particular dendritic fragmentation which is known as the grain refining mechanism for the uh, oil metal. So, of course, if we promote the heterogeneous nucleation process it will try to create uh, this uh, kind of the uh, equiac structure which in the grain refinement fine structure it will try to promote. Then grain detachment oil pool convection current is partially melted grain. So, partially the it try to melt the partially melted grain and that detach from the 
solid liquid mixture so from the solid liquid mixture the grains can be detached partially partial grains can be detached here and that can be act as a formation of the another this formation of the new grain so it's basically sites for the heterogeneous nucleus and it acts so from there this the mechanism the genetic fragmentation and grain detachment is basically associated with the fusion welding process and mostly driven by the convection main driving force for this kind of the dendritic fragmentation and grain detachment is the convective current presence within the small oil pool. Then heterogeneous nucleus in itself another mechanism for the formation of the uh, new grain. So in this case liquid metal content of course there are very foreign particles also there in the oil pool and of course then when uh, this foreign particles is start the nucleation process and after crossing the critical amount of the energy barrier to start the uh, heterogeneous nucleation process. So here uh, because the presence of the we know that difference between the homogeneous and heterogeneous nucleation process is that in the heterogeneous uh, nucleation process the presence of the foreign particle is basically reduces the amount of the energy the critical energy required to start the nucleation process. So that is why in homogeneous nucleation process the, the energy barrier is much more uh, as compared to the heterogeneous nucleation process. Now effect of the welding parameters on the heterogeneous nucleation process. Now we try to link with the this uh, what oh, heterogeneous nucleation process and what can be the parameters of the welding parameters what way it influence the heterogeneous nucleation process. We see that formation of the aqueous gas is enhanced by the higher heat, heat input and the welding speed. So high heat input and high uh, welding speed promotes the formation of the aqueous grain. So what we can do that? So for example, the increase in the heat input and the welding speed. So in this both the cases the temperature gradient at the end of the oil pool is actually reduces. So at the end of the oil pool uh, that trailing part at the end of the oil pool this uh, the increases uh, the this increase in the heat input. So increases more more laser power or more arc power or at the very high speed the temperature gradient is actually uh, decreases at the at, the, at this particular zone. Now with increasing the uh, welding speed the solidification rate of the oil pool also increases. We have seen that R is linked with the solidification rate or growth rate is associated with the, the welding speed also. So when increasing the oil pool the growth rate is actually increases that we have already seen. So therefore we see that temperature gradient at the end of the oil pool is low uh, and in this case uh, this ratio G by R. So G is basically uh, temperature getting low uh, at point and at the same time uh, we increasing the oil pool the solid pool will also increase. So R also increases. So G by R should be very very small. So this is the uh, it decreases and the, at the same time this constitutional supercooling in the front of the solid liquid interface should be increased for equiex grain formation. We know the constitutional supercooling G by R low value of the G by R and constitutional supercooling both uh, actually promotes the formation of the equiex grain. So in that sense we can say that at when heat input is very high or welding speed is also very high that will try to reduce the values of the G by R uh, ratio at the same time it is uh, it's promote the more amount of the constitutional supercooling at the trailing edge of the oil pool. So both actually helps to produce kind of the equiex kind of the grains associated with this uh, the oiling process. So uh, equiex grain means basically we promote the heterogeneous nucleation process. So heterogeneous nucleation process because all, uh, uh, in this case the because heterogeneous nucleation process we need the to start the nucleation process the energy barrier is very low as compared to the homogeneous nucleation process. So when energy barrier is very low and the, at the end at the end stage of the solidification process this MOSI zone is start formation of the so many nucleation at the same time. So that will promote the these two welding parameters promote the heterogeneous nucleation process or I can say that it is finally leads to the formation of the equiex grain at the trailing edge of the oil pool and at that actually at either at very high oil welding speed or at the very uh, welding power high welding power. Now overall you can see the control of the grain structure is basically you see the 
amount of the equiest gain increases the oil metal of course always it is the equiest gain is always prefer it try to produce some kind of the isotropic properties of the uh, component and of course isotropic properties of, at the same time the strength also increases because fine equiest structure is always promote to form the energy the strength properties also tensile strength so here in that sense this uh, amount of the equation gain will always try to promote uh, this uh, will try to promote uh, during this process. So, here you see that fine gain improves the ductility and fracture toughness also for the steel and stainless steel oil. So, that is a, the cause of the formation of the promoting the formation of the fine gain structure. Now, equation gains also lower the susceptibility of the solidification cracking which uh, reduce the, the chances of the formation of the solidification cracking also uh, for the equation structure. So, therefore, always it is always preferable to, to promote the formation of the EQX structure in during the oiling process and because it is having so many advantages just I have explained these three, uh, three here I have explained the three different advantages are there to if we try to promote the EQX kind of the structure in a oil pool. So, what are the mechanism for the structure of the so for example, promote the heterogeneous nucleation process or EQX structure one is the inoculating agent we can use the inoculating agent to in mixed up with the oil uh, this the metal and during the solidification that will help promote the heterogeneous nucleation process. Then somehow external steering of the oil pool steering we can use the using the external magnetic field also we can it is possible for the uh, oil pool steering that will also help the heterogeneous nucleation process. Then arc oscillation. So, arc oscillation is to promote the convective current of the oil pool or other way you can promote the heterogeneous nucleation process even for the arc pulsation instead of continuous supply of the current we can create the pulse um, pulse current also that will helps to uh, some way that uh, on off uh, pulse on or, or lowering and hiding of the energy it creates some kind of the dynamicity the oil pool will the metal movement uh, that also brings uh, promote the in this heterogeneous nucleation process. Then stimulated surface nucleation process also we can apply to perform the or uh, to promote the heterogeneous nucleation process. So, all this kind of the promoting the heterogeneous nucleation process is try to link with the formation of the EQX uh, uh, structure associated with the um, EQX structure of the uh, during the solidification of the uh, oil pool. Now, if we link with the oil microstructure, we see the oil microstructure of the SS310, here you can see that it is a SS310 is the specific stainless steel component, it is the nickel content is more in this case, uh, but it is having the primary uh, austenitic dendritic structure, primary austenitic dendritic and inter dendritic is the delta ferrite structure. So, primary the austenitic uh, dendrite is the primary arm is uh, this thing uh, this structure is there, but in between the inter dendritic space there is a in, uh, delta ferrite is there. So, this is the typical solidified structure of the SS310 it is having high nickel content and uh, delta uh, in this case the but oil microstructure for 309 which is having high chromium as compared to 3110. So, this is a different grade stainless steel, but in this case is the primary lathy delta ferrite is an is in, in the austenitic matrix. So, it is the primary delta ferrite is there, but which is embedded in a austenitic matrix. So, this is the, the structural behavior of the between 310 and 309. Of course, this kind of the difference we are getting although both are stainless steel, but grade are different one case is it is nickel content is high, another case is chromium content is high. So, with this behavior we can expect their, their solidified structure are different, but how it impact on the, the final properties or structure. In this case solute redistribution during the solidification of course, solute redistribution usually occurs because during the solidification the, at the solid liquid interface uh, we can see the, the gradient that means the concentration of the one concentration of solute is actually much more uh, in front of the solid liquid interface. So, during this solidification the redistribute the, the solute content during the process and that actually influenced by the had, um, at high cooling rate for the low chromium to nickel ratio. So, at high cooling rate low chromium to nickel ratio uh, we can this solute redistribution is basically restricted or is re reduced. So, if because uh, when you uh, move at the cooling rate is very high, high, very high first cooling rate is there, uh, high cooling rate. So, probably we are getting uh, less time for the uh, diffusion to occur or maybe redistribution of the solute at the in front of the solute interface usually less in this cases, but this happens for the low chromium to nickel ratio. Now, when the chromium to nickel ratio is high in this case always solidify 
as delta ferrite as the primary phase in this case. So, when chromium high chromium or nickel ratio is very high, the delta phase as a primary phase is the in this solidify and there ferrite content increases with increasing the cooling rate. So, ferrite content is increases with increasing the cooling rate and the in this case because the delta 2 gamma transformation has less time to occur at the high cooling rate. So, basically at the high cooling rate there is a less chance be, uh, from transformation from delta ferrite to the gamma ferrite, uh, uh, gamma the austenitic transformation is usually low because cooling rate is very high, very fast cooling is there. So, not having last much time to for this transformation from one phase to another phase. So, that is why we, at the high cooling rate we can expect this kind of the structural behavior differences when the the composition are different in case of the uh, stainless steel. Now, one of the important aspect associated with the solidification of the oiling process, not only oiling, even casting, that is a, the cracking usually occurs, uh, which is known as the solidification cracking. So, solidification cracking is usually occurs, one is the temperature gradient is, uh, we say the steepest temperature gradient growth occurs, but temperature, there is temperature gradient will always create some kind of the thermal strain. Now, this is one to uh, aspect presence of the temperature gradient that is always linked with the thermal strain. Uh, there is another composition that is called the compatibility of the various phases due to variations, variation of the composition. So, that what way the one phase to another phase, so the various phases usually form. So, there may be the com compatibility issue between the two phases and that usually associated with the variation in the composition. So, that will create uh, that promote some kind of the formation of the cracking during this solidification process. Other point is that embrittlement of the grain boundary if the there is a composition of the particular alloy is something like that, the low melting point alloy is there. So, in that cases it will try to create enter the grain boundary of the, the embrittlement of the grains usually occurs and that create some kind of the embrittlement cracking you try to follow or I can say that embrittlement cause of the solidification cracking cause of the cracking and that usually occurs during the solidification process. And overall you know there is a different phases are there uh, in this case during the solidification process you can the, uh, when try to solidify liquid to solid phase, but within the solid phase the, the there may be the compatibility issue between the two solid phases or there may be some volumetric contract usually occurs when changing of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase uh, for the as a bulk material that actually induce some kind of the, the cracking phenomena during the solidification process. So, these are the four major reasons that will try to promote the solidification cracking during the oiling process. Now, you can look into further then mainly two types of the cracks we, we know one is the we are talking about the solidification cracking, but uh, that is usually also known as the hot cracking process and hot cracking process is usually occurs at elevated temperature that means during the solidification only exactly the solidification when ch changing phase from liquid phase solid phase at this transition point the solidification occurs there you can find out the hot cracking or solidification cracking. But there is another type of cracking that is called also the cold cracking also and that usually occurs occurs after solidification not exactly does not happen during the solidification process usually occurs uh, again after the solidification process. Uh, process. So, that is why it is called the cold cracking and sometimes it is known as the hydrogen cracking also. Um, so, anyway we can look into that the what way we can look the solidification cracking or how general measure we can uh, we can take how to avoid the the cracking or solidification cracking associated with the uh, in, in any system any process. So, one is that minimize the stresses from the shrinkage during the cooling phases. So, of course, now there is a there is a phase change. So, when there is a change of the phase. So, it is associated with some kind of the shrinkage usually occurs. So, we can try to minimize the stresses from the shrinkage during the cooling. So, that shrinkage will induce some kind of the stress. So, because of the shrinkage during the cooling phase we try to minimize the amount of the stress generation. So, that possible in the change in the design of these things. We this is the way we can we can minimize the stresses from the shrinkage. Trials with the parameters and the sequence of the oiling process sometimes we can reduce the cracking also just to follow the certain sequence or, or just to modify the oiling parameters input uh, that means perform the oiling parameters means the what is the input parameters we can modify and we can follow the certain sequence uh, of the oiling process that helps to reduce the solidification cracking. So, there is another point that is called the preheating of the component to be welded. So, before welding if we preheat the substance material that will try to reduce the temperature differences uh, during this uh, welding process. So, that when there is a temperature difference the chances of the formation of the, the thermal strain is less 
and at the same time it is may not create the the cracking also uh, during the uh, process sometimes the uh, this cracking can be avoided by following the slow cooling rate so slow cooling rate or moderate cooling rate is is helps to form this uh, avoid the cracking formation but of course when we follow the very high cooling rate a rapid cooling or it will try to produce some kind of the uh, it is chances are more to produce the solidification cracking uh, this pro, uh, the in a uh, welded component so these are the general measure to prevent cracking uh, to avoid cracking during the the solidification in case of the welding process now hot cracking or the solidification cracking usually associated with this thing the different specific parameter or uh, characteristics of the material that actually associated with the hot cracking phenomena one is the low ductility material so uh, low ductility material uh, is basically uh, um, uh, is try to promote uh, a kind of the uh, this uh, formation of the the cracking next is the wide range of the solidification temperature if the solidification temperature is very high that means liquid dust and solid dust temperature is much gap is much more that will try to promote uh, that will make the chances more for formation of the solidification cracking third is the presence of certain impurity for example low melting point impurity like sulfur phosphorus and bo boron they actually makes the situation for forming of the uh, cracking during the solidification process and of course impurity segregation mainly at the oil centerized that actually creates the sinker stress and it promotes the the cracking associate uh, create the uh, solidification cracking so that means impurity segregation at the oil center line uh, in this case if the uh, growth rate is very very high so always we try to promote the some kind of the this uh, segregation behavior and that segregation at the oil center line it try to promote the uh, the sinkage stress associated with this thing sink because of the sinking st stress associated and when this stress cross particular limit then it will try to create the uh, cracking or which is known as the solidification cracking during this uh, process so these are the the particular uh, behavior or particular characteristics that will try to promote the solidification cracking so if we look into this particular point and we'll try to uh, avoid or try to uh, understand uh, this uh, how to avoid the cracking phenomena then we have to look in this particular points say for example the material having low range of the solidification temperature uh, even material not having any kind of the this kind of the impurity that will the chances is less for formation of the solidification cracking even if you try to promote that uh, no segregation occurs at the oil central line so that will helps to produce or prevent the solidification cracking associated with this uh, process so now the other ways to prevent the solidification cracking then one is that low levels of the carbon sulfur phosphorus and boron so we can we have to ensure that uh, there is not much because high carbon content uh, in a steel is always try to promote the solidification cracking it because but if you try to low carbon content or you can ensure very low percentage of the sulfur phosphorus boron then you can reduce the chances of the solidification uh, cracking Th uh, next point is that high level of mn so if you see the high level of presence of the high level of manganese is basically avoid to formation of the solidification cracking because this manganese can react with the other component it can react with the carbon sulfur phosphorus and boron and that will uh, reduce their effect so from that way the solidification solidification cracking phenomena can be reduced in the presence of the high level of manganese uh, uh, in, in this solidification process now we try to look into the solidification cracking just uh, just focusing on the laser uh, welding system the different perspective here we can see this thing so one is that whatever heat input we are using in case of the arc welding process so if we perform the similar welding process similar material in that case probably in if you use the laser system the heat input can be less as compared to the arc welding process so this is the way decreasing the welding heat input one of the effective way to prevent the hot cracking process or solidification cracking process but this decreasing the oil input is possible by choosing the uh, uh, laser welding system as compared to the arc welding process so that's why in this case the low heat input is possible the same welding is performed the low heat input using the laser as a heat source now in this case the hot cracking but at the other side for the enhances in the laser welding stainless steel and the nickel based alloy so hot cracking susceptibility also that means the cracking chances of the cracking becomes more uh, hot cracking or the solidification cracking when you perform the stainless steel on the nickel based alloy uh, using the laser welding system 
So here, this is the way one way you are taking. This is the one aspect that instead of the arc welding process, if you perform the laser welding system because laser welding can perform the same welding uh, process, uh, same welding features using the less heat input. So that from that point of view, this is the one solution using the laser welding process to avoid the solidification cracking. But other in material specific, very specific material, laser welding also uh, increase the chances of formation of the cracking this thing. Because in this why it is like that because in this case the keyhole type of the high depth of penetration we can we use this typical shape of the keyhole is basically try to promote the cracking also. At the same time the laser welding is usually associated with the high cooling rate rapid cooling rate as compared to the, the arc welding system and of course in this case the rapid cooling along with the extremely low heat input. So, both can promote the formation of the uh, this thing the susceptibility for the this uh, cracking hot cracking associated with the stainless steel and nickel based alloy. So generally speaking we can say that decreasing the oil heat input is the one of the most effective uh, solution for preventing the hot cracking. So just to reduce the heat input. For this reason we already explained the welding is uh, laser welding one is one of the safeguard, uh, safeguard uh, to avoid this uh, or to remove this particular problem because it can provide uh, the laser welding a relatively low heat input. So if from that sense laser welding uh, use of the laser welding is one solution. But other cases already said that uh, hot cracking susceptibility is basically enhances uh, in some cases using the laser welding system for particularly stainless steel and nickel based alloy. So these are the two reasons for this enhancement. The first is due to the characteristic shape of the penetration of the laser oil because this particular shape the one is the characteristic shape of the laser oil the high depth of penetration can be possible by formation of the keyhole and second is that the second reason enhancement of the susceptibility to the hot cracking is basically rapid solidification rate or rapid cooling rate both is associated with the laser welding system uh, under the low heat input. So that is why uh, these are the uh, things that we see the uh, one side of the this low heat input but other problem other side is the even it is the low heat input is the problematic uh, for the stainless steel and the nickel based alloy because uh, laser welding is other way try to produce the high rate of the cooling or sol high rate of the solidification. So, so this uh, two phenomena we are two fact we need to consider when you try to choose in, uh, the system uh, laser welding system for the application of a particular material uh, just to from the point of view of the solidification cracking. Okay. The second is due to the rapid solidification already explained that uh, and the cooling during the welding process in the try to look into the laser welding process but in general solidification cracking is basically developed under the condition that the thermal strain produce uh, this thing subjected to the oil exceeds the more than the critical value. If thermal stress is more than the critical value that creates the condition for the formation of the, the uh, cracking associated with the during the solidification process of the laser oiling system. So, here we can say that usually from one particular curve one, one measure we can do this thing which is called the solidification brittleness temperature range BTR curve. So, it is basically temperature versus the this uh, critical strain the strain thermal strain versus temperature. Uh, we can plot it and based on that whether C whether this particular thermal strain exceeds some critical value then only the solid uh, the cracking hot cracking usually occurs. But in this case the laser welding with the low heat input very low heat input and the strain rate during the cooling will increase. So, at low heat input the the is the strain rate also in uh, during the cooling phase also increases and consequently enhance the hot cracking suspectively as shown here. So, that means when you try to analyze this thing so we are telling that the critical strain is very high but at the same time usually at the low heat input uh, this strain rate also high. So, apart from the strain if strain rate also high that also promote the, the that also define or uh, characterize the, the solidification cracking phenomenon. But I am not going into much details how the strain rate is linked with the solidification cracking. But in general we can say that this both the strain uh, across the critical values of the this thermal strain then only we can say that the uh, this uh, the cracking usually occurs but before cracking is you start formation of the brittleness it actually reduces that brittleness temperature the range and that brittleness temperature range is, uh, is the uh, characteristic parameter to define the 
the hot cracking or solidification cracking associated with the, the laser welding system or uh, any other uh, welding system. Now here I have tried to explain uh, the solidification behavior of the space very specific the welding process. So here we see that overall you can see that uh, solidification behavior what are the nucleation forms okay, and how the temperature gradient varies and which point in a in a what way the oil pool shape actually influence the, the solidification behavior and what kind of the structure you can say whether polymer structure, EQX structure is promote and finally try to understand what are the these uh, the is very specific uh, cases that composition are different then solidification behavior or depends on this composition we see that the two different gate of the stainless steel the microstructure are different after the solidification because of their uh, uh, of their composition and that also can be linked with the uh, solidification behavior also and finally we try to understand that what way the solidification cracking is associated uh, during the uh, welding process and what parameters actually enhance the solidification uh, hot cracking process associated with the welding process in this particular uh, sub module. So I think it will help to understand uh, this uh, overall view of the solidification behavior of uh, fusion welding process. I think that is all. Thank you very much for your kind attention.